right, welcome to AQR. This is Coach Primo, um, the bell ringer for today. We're in AQR 5.3.2, another piecewise function. This is uh, the second step to piecewise functions, and then we'll get into uh, some more step in piecewise functions uh, later on today. Um, sketch a scatter plot of the following data. This is a bell ringer. Describe a scenario that might be represented by this data. So let's look at the data. The X column, um, our horizontal part of the graph, uh, is just 0 through 7. It's a sequential order from 0 to 7. And the Y column, however, it shows uh, Y starts at 120 at 0, where X is 0. And where X is 1, Y is 60. So it went down 60. And then at 2, it's at 0, which is down another 60. So negative 60 seems to be the slope. But then at 3, it goes up 60. All of a sudden, it goes from negative 60 to positive 60. And then at 4, it goes up another 60. And then 5, another 60. And 6, another 60. And 7, another 60. So what does that look like? If we get into it, you can see that all of these points, it looks like it just goes down to 0 and then comes back up. And if we were to go backwards, it would probably go up another 60 to 180 at negative 1. And then go to negative or 240 at negative 2. Looks like an absolute value. That would be a great way to describe it, um, an absolute value. But what in real life is an absolute value? Okay. Um, domains and range, pretty simple. Start at zero domain and it goes to seven. That's our, our domain. Range goes from zero up to 300. So those are the only things we need to know about it. Um, I can't think of a real life example right now off the top of my head that would mimic or model uh, an absolute value, something that could be never can be negative. Um, great things. Let's see. Uh, despite the bad weather we had a couple weeks ago, I did get the water working in my house, went under there to fix the rest of it, found a few leaks, fixed the leaks instead, um, decided I'll wait until later this week to work on um, the rest of my pipes in my house. So that's my great things. If you have anything to share, great things, please send me some kind of communication. And I'd love to share it with my uh, fellow students. So, all right, let's continue on with the lesson. All right, so Mrs. Washington lives 20 miles from her office and drives her car to and from work every day. The graph below shows her distance from home over time as she drove home from work one day. Now, this is a distance away from home over time. So she starts at 20 miles away. And then in 10 minutes or in eight minutes, she's only 15 miles away. And then in 16 minutes, she's only seven miles away. In 20 minutes, she's six miles away. And then in 32 minutes, she's home or zero miles away. So why did dependency statement expressing the relationship between two variables, distance and time? So first of all, which variable is dependent on the other? Okay, if you think about this for a second, the distance we travel is completely dependent on the time. Time doesn't change because we've traveled any distance. Time changes, it just keeps marching on. So it's pretty simple. Time is the independent variable and distance is the dependent variable. So, Mrs. Washington's distance from home depends on the amount of time she has been driving. That's a great way to describe that dependency statement. All right, recall the formula to find slope of a line or a segment. We use this information to find the slope of each line segment in the graph of Mrs. Washington's commute. So, let's take a look. Uh, segment A, the slope. Let's see, we went from from 20 to 15, so 15 minus 20, and then went from 8 to 0. So we're going, this is 8, 15 to 0, 20. Went from 0, 20 to 8, 15. So we're in negative 5 eighths, all right? And we'll put that in the slope there. Equation of the line, or well, a segment B, slope is 7 minus 15, because we went to 15, okay? Looks like we went to 15 possible I went to 16. Oh no, it is. It's 15. I apologize. It's the y value, not the x value, because 
16 minus 8. We went from 8 to 16 uh, horizontally, okay? And then from vertically, we went from 15 all the way down to 7. So we went, and it's a negative 1, okay? We put that in the slope section. Um, segment C, negative 1 quarter, we'll put that in the slope column. And segment D is negative 1 half, we'll put that in the slope column. And we'll keep going. What does the slope represent in the context of this situation? In this situation, we're looking at something completely different than we're accustomed to because um, we're looking at it in explicit functions, not regular functions. The slope represents the speed at which Mrs. Washington is driving. We need to look at it in the practical application of it. This is actually the speed. Now, slope, speed. Think about that for a second. Minus 5 eighths, how does that equate to speed? Well, we look at it in time and miles, okay? This is minus 5 eighths miles in a minute, okay? Or minus one mile in a minute. We're used to and accustomed to looking at miles per hour, not miles per minute. And we're also looking at it negatively because we're not looking at the distance we traveled. We're looking at the distance left to get to a destination. So it's always going to be a negative number. Um, is the slope... An increasing or de de decreasing rate of change. And what does it mean in the context of the situation? Okay, that's pretty simple. Um, the slope is decreasing rate of change, meaning that Mrs. Washington's distance from home decreases as, as the amount of time she has been driving increases. And that's what I just stated earlier. All right, so recall the point-slope formula and find the equation of a line of segment. Using this information, find the equation of each line segment in the graph of Mrs. Washington's commute. That's pretty simple. We're going to use this segment A, Y minus 20 equals minus 5 eighths, X minus 0. And there's your function. Segment D, segment, segment B, segment C, segment D for some reason didn't actually get put in there. But you got them all in there. And uh, let's look at the domain and the range. Identify the domain or range of the line that is, describes each segment of Mrs. Washington's commute. Use inequality symbols to indicate the domain and range and record the results in the table. Okay, so we're looking at the domain. It's from 0 to 8. So 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 8. Because at 8, we're actually that far away. And the range is from 15 to 20. Notice we're using the exact right inequality symbols. It doesn't equal 8. It only goes up to 8. 8 to 16, 7 to 15, 16 to 20, 6 to 7, 20 to 32, and then 0 to 6. Those are our domains and range for each part of it. This is called a piecewise function. A piecewise function means that there are different pieces of the function that have different formulas for each piece. The height of a diver above the water as a function of time can be given using two different functions. A constant function for the time the diver is on the diving board or the platform, and a quadratic function for the time when the diver jumps off the board and falls toward the water. Rafael's on vacation with his family in Acapulco, Mexico. La Quebrada is a famous cliff that is about 35 meters above the ocean surface. And for many years, divers have jumped off La Quebrada, Quebrada, however you want to pronounce it, into the Pacific Ocean. Rafael signed up to go cliff driving. He stands on the cliff 35 meters above the ocean ocean surface below. What function describes his height above the ocean surface, h, as a function of time while he stands on the cliff? Let me put my picture in the picture of Raphael, who's diving off the... It does not want to move. There we go. h equals 35. That's exactly it. He's 35 meters above the ground, <laughs> of the surface of the ocean, so that's exactly where he's going to be. Raphael's next. He walks to the edge of the cliff, stands still for three seconds, and then he dives off the cliff. As soon as he leaves the cliff, the height above the ocean surface can be found using the function h equals minus 4.9 times t minus 3 raised, that quantity is uh, squared, plus 35, where h represents Raphael's height from the ocean surface and t represents the time since Raphael stood at the edge of the cliff. Fill in the table below to describe Raphael's height above the ocean surface over time. So while he's standing still, h of t equals 35. And the domain is just from 0 to just 3 because he dives off 3 seconds later. In his free-for-all motion, h t, just like we're given, is minus 4.9 times t minus 3 raised. That 
quantity raised to the second power plus 35. That domain is three less than or equal to T, whatever T is, until he hits the surface of the water. Okay? So I'm going to launch you with this. Really simple uh, lesson. Um, go back into Schoology and make sure you do your assignments. In the meantime, folks, be blessed and be a blessing.